from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, May the 16th, 2019. Acting U.S. Assistant Secretary of State David Satterfield is in Israel trying to help resolve a dispute between Israel and Lebanon. Lebanon's national news agency said Satterfield was in Beirut yesterday and met with Lebanon's President Michael Aoun and Prime Minister Saad Hariri to try and find a working mechanism to define maritime borders between the two countries who have disagreements regarding offshore drilling in several points along the border. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu expressed his gratitude to U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and to U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman for reinforcing the legality of the recent U.S. recognition of Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights at Israel's border with Syria. In an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal Tuesday, the two write, Condemnation of the U.S. move by many countries cited U.N. Security Council Resolution 242 to back up their position. But they argue that the U.S. decision is actually consistent with the resolution, which calls for negotiating a just and lasting peace within secure boundaries. Citing the war-minded Syrian regime, Pompeo and Friedman write, by affirming Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights, the president has afforded Israel the only secure and recognized boundary that can exist under the circumstances, the objective of Resolution 242. And at Israel's border with Gaza, Kogat, Israel's liaison group with the Palestinians, said that Israel prevented almost 200 items from entering Gaza that could be used for terror purposes. Some 172 mailed packages containing such suspected dual-use items were confiscated at the recently reopened Erez border crossing yesterday including drones, holsters for weapons, hidden cameras, communications equipment, scuba diving lights, and military boots. Israel's President Reuven Rivlin welcomed five new ambassadors to Israel today. They hail from Ethiopia, Finland, Peru, Greece, and Nicaragua. He spoke to the new envoys of the need to fight anti-Semitism and racism. And the Jerusalem Post reports that Rivlin also asked Ethiopian Ambassador Reta Alemu Nega to help have Israel's observer status at the African Union restored, and that he asked Kursika Leto Asikainen of Finland to help try to have Israel admitted to the European Union. Finland will assume the presidency of the EU this July. And staying with the EU, its foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini confirmed a planned academic study to investigate whether new Palestinian school books are promoting incitement and violence against Israel. The Institute for Monitoring Peace and Cultural Tolerance in School Education cited Mogherini, saying that an academic study was in the works of identifying possible incitement to hatred and violence and any possible lack of compliance with UNESCO standards of peace and tolerance in education. The local animal rights party in the Netherlands has filed its second bill aimed at banning kosher slaughter, calling the ritual of shrita cruel. The RTL broadcaster reported that the party for the animals filed the bill on Monday in the Tweed Kamer, the Dutch lower house. The Dutch constitutional court opposes such a ban and said that the bill unreasonably compromises religious freedoms. Meanwhile, U.S. envoy against anti-Semitism Elon Carr addressed such efforts to ban or limit Jewish rituals like Shrita, as well as Brit Milah, the Jewish ritual circumcision of boys at eight days old, at the General Convention of the Conference of European Rabbis in Belgium on Monday. Carr said this is nothing but a forced expulsion of the Jewish community of the country that adopts such legislation. A forced expulsion, he said, and it is intolerable. These limitations or efforts to ban these practices also affect the Muslim community with their similar ritual practices in these areas. While police in Massachusetts are looking into whether a fire outside the home of a Chabad rabbi could be a hate crime, firefighters were called to the home of Rabbi Avi Bukiet and his family Saturday night. The home also serves as the Center for Jewish Life in Arlington, Belmont. 
They put out the small fire that burned the shingles of one side of the home. The town's acting chief of police, Julie Flaherty, said authorities are leaving open and actively investigating the possibility of a hate crime. Local police, meanwhile, have added patrols in the area. The Israel Innovation Authority, or IIA, signed a memorandum of understanding yesterday with the Mayo Clinic. The two bodies will focus on technological innovations in new medical devices, diagnostics, software solutions, and therapies. CEO of the IIA, Aaron Aaron, said the combination of Israeli innovation and Mayo Clinic's world-class clinical experience, expertise, and facilities will enable the creation and development of cutting-edge solutions that could prove instrumental in laying the groundwork for the future of global health care. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, May the 16th at 7 o'clock, it's Talmud Study at 8, a discussion of the future of Zionism with Dan Shapiro and Elliot Cosgrove. Then at 9, Mark Golub sits down with author Fran Klagsbrunn, who talks about her Golda Meir biography on L'Chaim. At 10, it's an encore presentation of the Jake Ehrenreich Show. And coming up right after this newscast tonight, ILTV brings you the Jewish world. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, May the 16th, 2019. I'm Tisha Bader.